Welcome in everybody to Fantasy Pros MLB. This is Leading Off Live, brought to you by Bet365. It's me, Joey P, the Slump Buster. That is the Welsh. Look at that fresh dew on the Welsh. Somebody got a haircut. And it's all of you, the Peanuts and the Cracker Jacks. And we're here to talk baseball for the next, oh, I don't know, 30 minutes or so. Great show coming up for you today. You dynasty folks, or even the redraft folks in deeper leagues, Welsh has a phenomenal segment coming up today based on an article he's got up on fantasypros.com, looking at some of those minor league stashes, giving a little minor league report, which is great. We're right out of the gate with some fun stuff there. Tough day in betting. We will take our L's. It's been nothing but rainbows and sunshine in that market for a while, but unfortunately, yesterday was doom and gloom, but that's okay. We get back on the horse today. Short slate, but Welsh, the hair looks really good today. I got to ask you, you, as somebody who hasn't had a haircut uh, in 18 years now, uh, what what does a haircut cost? I don't even know. Well, I'm going to disappoint, and it might be obvious with really how my hair ends up being. I haven't gone to a barber in like 15 plus years. It's all mm -hmm. done at the house and just beep, boop, beep, boop, beeps, nothing special or anything like that. If I did, maybe I'd get like, like, you know, you know, like everybody's doing like the like the lines through it or something like that. Or maybe the Fantasy Pros logo get like just cut right into the side of my hair. That would be cool. I have no idea. I assume it's a million dollars. Everything is a million dollars now. I'm an old person. Everything. I'm like, hey, remember when this was like twenty dollars? It's eighty dollars now. So, yeah, Michael in there said fifty dollars with tip. I remember it was like fifteen dollars at Great Clips. It was like fifteen bucks when I was getting haircut fifty dollars to get your hair i remember 25 or something like that that's kind of the last time i got I mean, inflation's yeah. a bitch i guess i don't know uh go cards wants to know you got a floby at home you know floby see i was gonna say i bet walsh doesn't even know what a floby is no a floby was a hair cutting device uh created in the early 90s where you could be at home and self-cut your hair it was almost like a vacuum uh for your hair oh. and it would and it would cut it would like suck one of those cut. metal things oh wow it certainly does suck. That's for sure. Uh, yeah. And uh, there you go. Mike Mayer saying with $50 uh, with tip. So there you go. So Mike Mayer knows because he's got the fresh cut every single day. You know what is weird, though? It's so fun. interesting you're saying this. Like, I see more barbers than I see, like, super cuts or whatever. Right. Like, it's trendier to have, like, barber places than it is having those chain. Maybe I will go do, do one. Let's do it. Let's do a social behind the scenes video joe you, you go do one too what, what could they do for you maybe trim up the beard or i don't know well when manscape used to be our uh you know i don't sponsor, want to watch that, that one different show but our sponsor now is bet 365 bet five bucks get 150 in bonus bets but do not sign up without using that promo code leading off support the show support bet 365 our sponsor for 2024 they do great work over there and uh speaking of great work Oh man, I'm doing great work busting people out of slumps. Where are we going to start, <sighs> Mr. Alvarez? That's right, four for five, not one, but two homers. Uh, it's a pretty good day. I mean, I might even just show the leaderboard right now. Is it too soon to do it? Um, oh, wait, there uh, it is. Oh, there's the leaderboard. Uh, look at me, look at me all the way up at five, tied for third after just two days. Welsh, you're like on a cliff there. I'm at barely holding you're on, literally hanging on there. Ethan did you a solid just keeping you on the graphic, in my opinion. That's what happened there. But we'll get to that later. But uh, I changed this, too, because if you recall, I had Yelich. And then I, yep. at the last minute, I was like, you know what? I'm feeling Alvarez this today. This is also twice that <laughs> I, and I, I don't get, you don't get to, like, claim everybody or anything like that. But twice, I promise you, on my life, Harper, I was like, I was going to pick Harper, and I went away from it. I was picking Alvarez. He was the BVP player today, and I went away from it like a big, stupid idiot not it is one thing that you are getting these home run calls and i know exactly what we're in for but then also that i pivoted pivot away it's hurting it's hurting joey there we go we're at nineteen thousand subscribers here by the way and yeah. renegade says when we get to 20 well should shave his head and i'm all for that <laughs> that's no. i don't know how your what well your wife doesn't like your beard she likes it clean shaven so why not go i all the way i do, like we're gonna fight this for quite some time because i don't think uh I don't think I can. I don't think I'm going to look good in, in a bald head. So trust me. All right. Well, we shall see. Well, uh, your Alvarez uh, looked good yesterday. That's for sure. Uh, Christian Javier, five shutout innings there, three strikeouts and that wins. So a good day for Houston. Good day for Shoei Otani. Two for four with a solo homer. Glass now struck out seven. Good start there. They get a W over the Giants. Kyle Harrison gave up four runs in that start. Aaron Judge. 
two run homer. So there you go. I was going to pick him today. You know, if the Yankees were playing to bust him out of the slump, but it already happened yesterday. So that's okay. You see Tori Lula too with the Diamondbacks. He said he was kicking, they were kicking themselves for not walking Aaron judge. And that we, it was a weird contest. If you watch it with the Diamondbacks, because it was like Yankees got up and Diamondbacks got back. And it was, it was there's a lot of oddities were going on and the Diamondbacks ended that game. I don't know if you saw this. They had no more hitters on the bench. And they had to put out Scott McGuff, the relief pitcher, as their final out. They had nobody with, I think, two men on. And Scott McGuff was on to try to potentially win the game. And, of course, he actually got a bad called uh, strike three. And that ended the game. Yankees win. Yankees win. The Yankees win. Uh, if you listen to us in the offseason, some of our favorite starting pitcher values uh, had good nights. Uh, Frankie Montas, another good start. Five and two-thirds for him. Uh, that's two now for Frankie Montas. If you're keeping score at home, good starts for him, uh, especially against the Phillies too. That's a much tougher lineup than the first one he faced. So everyone was like, ah, let's see when he faces a tougher lineup. Well, he did, and he was great. Aaron Savali, eight strikeouts, one run, six innings against the Rangers. Again, no slouch lineup there. And Joe Musgrove, six innings, one run, ball strikeout seven. So forget that little hiccup start. Everything's fine. We're back on trap. You got to give these guys a little bit more time in this Korea series, back and forth, all the weird travel, all that stuff. Jordan Walker, we got to figure out if we're going to give some slack to him. Uh, he was looking for a pinch hitter after grounding into a double play earlier. Uh, 22 plate appearances so far. He's four for 19. Any panic button? I know it's early on Jordan Walker. Uh, I mean, he's not in the like top five. If I were to make a board, that might be a fun article or something to do. Your actual like who is the panic board list. He's not at the tippy top, but I mean, I get it. But um, hard hit numbers are about the same as last year. He's striking out a little bit more. He's still hitting the ball hard. He's just, you know, five, six games, whatever it is. He's just not locked in anything. He's not hitting fastballs. That's going to be something to watch. And that's probably his biggest issue. Maybe he's compensating for the secondary stuff, but he is hitting 154 against fastballs right now, which he's seeing 52% of the time. He hit 291 against fastballs last year. So, um, you know, might just be compensating to hit like off speed stuff or just is not in a rhythm. My panic level is like a two at best. You know, one is almost a, a nothing burger, maybe a two, just because also the whole off season, we were like, Oh, he's gained 20 pounds of muscle and he's getting bigger and blah, blah, blah. And like, nothing's happening. Let's see. Let's talk in like two weeks on Jordan Walker, but he's not in the top five of my worry meter. Is he a buy low? Maybe it depends how low, like, do you, uh, see, I just don't think he's a guy. I think everybody's indifferent about him. Anyone mm. who's selling isn't trying to get out of the Jordan Walker business. So you can't get him for 80 cents on the dollar and no one wants to sell him for 80. You know what I'm saying? Like you're just not going to find a right, uh, a right path for trade right now. I just, I think he's got to pick one side another week and he's kind of sucky. Yeah. Maybe I'll try to buy. Cause then I, I think the cost could be pretty low, but I just don't think it's low enough right now. Now uh, people are talking about it in the chat. So let's bring it up here. Cause I know you want to talk about it up front. Trent Fleming, what happened to George Kirby? Welsh, George Kirby hurt yesterday. He hurt me in my wallet. Don't like it. Uh, and I got the early good number of four and a half. He imploded. Seattle was bad. What do you make out of this? Is it a blip on the radar or any concern here? Yeah, I'm a little bit worried because I have every single share of George Kirby that ever existed in the world. But I do think I'm going to like minimalize my worry with him. So first, and this is like a little bit of logic I'm taking with him because George Kirby's a little bit of a head case. I'm a little bit of a head case. So I can kind of like get into that same space with him. First start, first at bat, walk. He gets two walks, I think, in the first inning, which by the way, I was like, oh, it's a great bet under one walk. He gets super like ornery about walks and stuff like that. So what happened in this last start? Because he was kind of all around the place. He was hitting the zone too much. His fastball, was in the zone like 10% more of the time. His sinker was like almost 15% in the zone more because he doesn't want to walk guys. And what happened? Bam, guys are, he's getting way too much contact, even though it was actually not great contact. It was just contact that was finding the spots all over the board. So Kirby will do that. He just didn't have that big whiff stuff. He was pitching way too timid. And then because he was going longer in innings, those velos were starting to come down. Is he not going to be great? It's a possibility, but I'm going to take a buy low opportunity off of this. Yeah, this I is, I, I don't think you can take every single pitcher. And I guess every, we can't, I can't be like Webb and gallon and Kirby. Someone's probably going to fail, 
but I do believe in Kirby. Well, let's frame it this way. Yeah. Webb or Kirby, who would you rather buy low on the most? Like, Kirby. Who is the better target? Kirby. Kirby. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm so high. I'm still so high on Kirby. I think the stuff is there. I think uniquely the two starts made him go in bad directions and he was just way too in the zone. So he wasn't walking guys where he walked guys in the first start. And then you get a contact team, just absolutely take advantage of him. Maybe we are going to panic and maybe I'm going to be eating my words all season long and Kirby's going to stink, but I will take a buy. If someone is, this is a guy that I think someone absolutely can freak out after two starts and a mm -hmm. horrific one. I will put him on the ball. Put him on the buy video next week. Test me. There you go. He's making the video. Subscribe to the me. channel. Watch the video. The waiver video is coming out uh, later today also. Jackson Churio, first major league home run. Congrats, buddy. You did it. Wyatt Langford, 0 for 4 pair of strikeouts. Uh, I feel like this was like you could just lock this up. This guy was so locked in. He was so red hot in spring. This is just the nature of baseball. If people overpaid on Wyatt Langford and are freaking out, this is a great time to start poking around to see if Wyatt Langford's available in your league, because I am not concerned about Wyatt Langford. This is literally my biggest fear of Langford for the overpays of why I didn't overpay. Cause I knew I had this gut feeling where nobody's that hot for that long. Everybody cools off season started. Of course there's a cool off period. And here we go. Like a little bit extra pressure, you know, I'm at the big league level, all that nonsense that happens. This is like, you got to set your watch to this. So I'm fine about this. I have no panic in there. I know some people are, especially the late, overpayers the ones that drafted late because a lot of people did what are your thoughts on Langford start yeah I mean I don't know people are people treat their players sometimes like we've been going for a month and it's like well he was really great in the beginning and then he tailed off it's like six games it's like six games he was good for like four and then not good for two I, I don't know man I think that's pretty crazy uh there's gonna be ups and downs I'm not worried you know what I worry about here's real worries I worry about I I worry about like velo uh sustained decreases. So gallon, like gallon, that's kind of a worry. Mm -hmm. But you know what I worry about? Ellie de la Cruz. When you have a 40% strikeout rate, you're not making contact, and that strikeout rate carries over from year after year. Those are things I worry about early on because how much better is that going to get? Because he that guy hasn't shown the ability to make those type of adjustments. I worry about him. I don't worry about Wyatt Langford not getting a couple hits. I don't even worry that much about um, Evan Carter, who's scoring a gajillion runs with zero hits all the time. Like these guys are going to maintain. I worry about really bad strikeout stuff or really bad loss of stuff. And yeah. Ellie is a guy I worry about, not Langford right now. Oh, look, I'm facing Tampa. Like Savali had a good start. Uh, Eflin yesterday, uh, two days ago, I should say. Well, you know, these things are going to happen. It's also yeah. a tough ballpark, you know. All right, let's get to. Uh, some of the fun things here going on. And obviously one of the fun things we've got always is free stuff. You like free stuff, Welsh? Because I like free stuff. Free How about cool. this? The Trophy Smack Championship Trophy. Two steps. Subscribe to the channel. Boom. Comment on a video. Bang. That's all boom. you got to do. And you could win this. It's glorious. It's fantastic. And our good pals over at Trophy Smack are giving, just giving it away for free. All you got to do is be part of our little uh, group here at uh, Leading Off here on Fantasy Pros MLB. So subscribe today to that. Some fun little stats and nuggets. I know you all like the nuggets. Brent Rooker, 0 for 4, 3 strikeouts. He's now 2 for 20. Uh, so there you go. That's a fun start. Uh, Jaron Duran, 4 for 4, 4 singles, hitting 393 so far to start the year. Denelson Lamette, clean inning for him, 2 Ks. So this is fun. This is like the ghost of, you know, uh, fantasy baseball nerd communities past like sleeper guys. Julio Tehran uh, is going to make $2.5 million with the Mets, but it's booty time today. Jose Buto, booty, booty, start booty, here. Booty. booty, booty, booty. It's booty time. I can't wait for the booty time starts. I'm very excited about it. It's that. actually against my guy too, Matt Manning. Matt Manning I know. Was someone I thought I was going to bounce back. So this is a Joe versus Welsh matchup, oh, a double wait. header. Double header. Also, uh, speaking of the Tigers, Jason Foley, Seems to be the guy now. Uh, the walks were just killing Alex Lang. So here we go. The pivot already. <laughs> Look, it's amazing how many saves have been available on the board the first week that were undrafted saves. And I just don't like I just every year this happens. And every year I shake my head and I don't get why people chase saves. But anyway, what do you think of Foley uh, confidence in him keeping the job the entire season? I think it's a decent chance. It does seem like they've got guys that they're willing to go to, but his stuff. That was like day one, and I have one league where I've got um, I've got Alex Lang, but I actually had Foley in a couple drafts and holds, which ended up working out. But like Foley stuff looks incredible, hitting one hundred and one. You, you you throw for strikes and you throw a fastball sing or whatever 
over one one oh one against uh you know a relief pitcher in Alex Lang who consistently is just walking guys not putting out good stuff. I think Foley has every opportunity. Plus, they've already shown us by putting Lang in other spots. I think he might have came in the six once. Come in, I like this is Foley. This is Foley's yeah. gig here. My only argument still to your like, why do people pay for saves? Is you are just in the battle of fab right now if you play in a fab based league, it's or you? if you're in a waiver based league, you don't even have the option for waiver based leagues. Have I totally one. get it, but everything should be fab at this point. Like, let's let's grow up and let's be adults and let's play with fab. But again, I'd rather be spending fab chasing saves, which I can grab in and I can actually get a hold of and hold possibly all season than chasing offensive productivity. It's really hard. It's really difficult. And maybe you get a couple pitchers early on, like Whitlock, Hicks, uh, Crochet, some of these guys early on the starting pitchers. But we all know, you know, most of those guys come late July are going to be pumpkins. Let's be honest. When they start getting up to 110 innings, 100 innings, that's just going to be what happens. Wonky was late to the party today, by the way. So I know you were late. You missed my gloating about the home uh, run calls. So I'm going to do it again. Just for you. Uh, just uh, if in case, just in case, you know, you, you didn't, you missed it. Uh, here it is. Boom. There's the board. I want you to feel sad wonky for missing that because uh, it was good. Times were good. Good times were had. Look, everybody who has Alvarez in leagues, I think is really happy with me right now. That's what I'm thinking right now. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's continue on here with a, a new segment we've got going on here again. This is something we're very excited about. Thursday is usually a lighter slate, but this is the perfect time to start digging deep here for a little prospecting with the Welsh. All right, Welsh. So this is an opportunity here to take a look at what's going down on the farm and see uh, some of the names maybe we need to stash and also some reports on some of the bigger names that we are waiting to make their big league debut. So the floor is yours. I feel like I needed like a prospect or have like, well, well there, Joey, let me tell you, you about definitely need an old timey 49er voice. I, I know yeah. I, I can do that. I can do that. We're going to talk about some of the games up and comers. No, we're going to talk about, uh, I've got an article out. It's prospects to stash. You can find it over on fantasy pros. You can follow me on the X at, is it the Welsh to find them? And there's three categories. There's stashes. There's the next wave and there's the watch list. Now the stashes relatively obvious players but how about this i wish we could put the graphic up but we didn't have it uh we weren't able to get it done is the top player comes from one of the most insane games we've ever seen it was actually a score gami last night 26 runs norfolk scored who is norfolk it's a triple a affiliate to the baltimore orioles check this out because this leads into jackson holiday jackson holiday was on base six times last night he had four hits scored five runs Walk twice, 400 batting average. Now, we're going to talk about Holiday, but the other guys just want to point out, Heston Kerstad, who Joe has talked about, does love for a long time. I've seen a whole bunch. He had five hits and 10 RBI last <laughs> night, which mm -hmm. is crazy. crazy. Uh, Kobe Mayo, he had five hits. It goes on and on. It was crazy. They scored 26 runs, 29. 29 hits they had. But... This was about Jackson Holiday. He's the top stash that you've got to continuously pay attention to. First homer came off of a lefty. We've had tons of questions all season long. Hey, I think it happened in the uh, show after the show, Joe, where we had someone saying, there's some guys that are out there. Should I drop? Ho no. Stash Holiday. He will be the top waiver guy. This outing is one of those things that's going to jump out to us. I wouldn't be shocked if it's in the next two weeks that we're going to see Jackson Holiday. So feel comfortable about it. The other one in the stash category, Paul Skeens. Three no hit innings, struck out five in his debut. What else do we really need to deal with with Paul Skeens? If the Pirates are going to keep trying to win games, uh, they're going to have to consider bringing him up. He was phenomenal in that first start. There really are none of those questions outside of maybe building up innings. He went three. So maybe the next outing, we need to see him go four or five. What I would pay attention to is the super two date. So what I tell you is stash. These are guys. Those two guys are on the bench. There's four or, or there's three others in the article if you want to check it out. Joey, I'll plow through this because you had a question about this. The next wave. So these are two players in my article. There's more that will be coming after these guys. Anything could happen but maybe you don't want to put them on your bench. You need to put them on a super, super watch list. Joe, how about Jack Leiter? You were shocked when I put Jack yeah. Leiter on this list, right? I was because, you know, like I remember him being solid in college. We all do. And then he's really just, 
I, I mean, look, if he wasn't an outlier's kid, I don't know if the rope would have been as long for him, but it is. And so far it has been, and he didn't have the greatest spring ever. So this was encouraging this first start. Well, a lot of it hasn't been great. He has been consistently trying to revamp his stuff. Well, in his first start, he went four perfect innings. He struck out seven, uh, his IVB, the in vertical break, the inverted, uh, induced in vertical break was like 22, which was crazy. You could check out Chris Clegg. He had tweeted about it and he was sitting 96. And here's the other deal. The Rangers rotation is not locked right now. John Gray kind of is not good. And they don't have Max Scherzer yet. And they don't have, obviously, DeGrom. So who knows what's going to happen? He actually might get an opportunity soon, especially when he's being consistent. So that's one guy I would pay attention to. Another one is Jordan Beck with the Colorado Rockies. Beck has gotten off to a great start through his first couple of games, 357, two homers, a triple, five total hits through four games. He's a big power speed combo, had a good spring. He actually could be one of those guys because the Rockies, they've got no offense. They're one, they look like one of the worst teams in baseball. So when they start to try to tear it apart and change it up, Jordan Beck, I think, could be one of the top names that's brought up. And then the last thing I'm going to th uh, throw to you is the final in my article. It's the watch list. Deeper names to pay attention to. These are even further down the list. The one I'm going to throw at you, Carson Wisenhunt with the San Francisco Giants. Wisenhunt's already pitching up at uh, AAA. He was great in his first couple innings that he pitched. He's got one of the best changeups in baseball. He got way bigger. And this is a guy, Giants have got a lot of injuries as well. They're still building up Blake Snell. Robbie Ray is out there. You could see Carson Wisenhunt get an opportunity. If he does, put him on your watch list. Those are some of the prospecting we are doing for the early season to keep an eye on. And you can check out the article at Fantasy Pros, like I said, if you want to see all the names. Welsh is always the best when it comes to prospecting. I'd like to see your face on that beard there <laughs> of that fellow. That's what I want to see. But well, look, we're going to do this every single Thursday here on Leading Off. Take a look at the prospects and how they're doing. Very useful for redraft and for the Dynasty Leagues as well. Uh, let's get into the three up, three down real quick. Zach Wheeler. Three runs, only one earned, recorded uh, 10 strikeouts in six innings. Really good. Seiya Suzuki stays red hot. Welsh's guy from the other night. Three for five, another homer. You should have just stayed with Seiya. Should've. That's what you should have done. Cole should've Reagans uh, didn't get the decision, but his ERA is now 1.46. So Reagans looks like he's as advertised seven strikeouts before leaving with the 3 nothing lead, but that lead was blown by the bullpen. So uh, thoughts on Reagans' start yesterday? Yeah, you know, so the, the rain delayed that game hours and hours. I missed the whole start. I was looking so forward to that mm. start. Corbin Burns, Cole Reagans, watching the game, doing stuff. We got things going on during the day. And then the game completely got away from me, and I didn't get to watch. I had to go back and watch some stuff. But Cole Reagans, absolutely as advertised. He looks phenomenal. And it takes me back to a question that I saw a couple days ago. I don't know if we answered this yesterday or whatever. Joe, who would you rather have rest of the season now after two starts, Zach Allen or Cole Reagans? Uh, I still say Gallon, but you know, it's, it's, it's in the conversation. It's definitely in the conversation, but, uh, it's, it's a good point by the way, yesterday, in case you missed it, uh, we did over at discord Wednesdays after the show, we're going to do the show after the show where we talk to you guys and gals and we talk baseball, we bring you up here. It's almost like a call and radio show. It's super fun. fun on discord. It was, it was great. About a half hour we spent with folks, took questions from the chat, took questions live in person from people. It was tremendous. Uh, they say, don't meet your heroes. I disagree. Come meet us. Hang out with us over on Discord. Again, it's free to join. It's fantasypros.com slash chat. Join us, especially on Wednesdays for uh, our little cleaning up show where we and continue it's, to discuss stuff. And it's up in the air. I don't 100% know. Just so everybody knows, if you get too comfortable, the first episode is on the podcast feed. Wherever you guys yeah, listen, you can to, the listen podcast, to it, audio only. Uh, yeah, and make sure you're subscribed and all that. But it's, I think it's still a little bit in question if that's going to be there every single week. So my point is, I don't know. I could be wrong. Maybe it will be. And, and kudos to everybody and great. But just letting you know, if it's not, you need to be in the Discord if you don't want to miss mm. that show. Well, uh, go listen to it. So prove to everybody that it's good and you like it. And then go join us and be part of it. Look, we're the interactive show. We actually want to hear from you. We like, enjoy, you know, some of these, you know, famous people, you know, they don't like you know, dealing with the, the, the public, not Did you us. just call us famous. Yeah. We're, we're mid-level <laughs> celebrities. Now I've been upgraded <laughs> to a mid-level celebrity because oh, I've been okay. recognized twice this year in public. Oh, is, is that the of, marker? I mean, I had like six or seven times. Yeah. That's year. what I mean. So you're a mid-level celebrity too. Like you know, a, like a F level. 
F level celebrity? Well, I mean, Bogman's a D plus. That's you know, want to know what ruined it all? I'm going to tell you what ruined all of it, which put Joe's level one up, is us all randomly being in Nashville, Tennessee, and someone walking out of a bar and going, "Is that?" J-? Well, they said Derek, and then they freaked out when they saw Joe. That's probably yeah. what ruined this. Well, because I think it was weird to see us together because people, you know, who watch yeah. the show know that we don't live next to each other. So seeing both of us together. And then seeing both of us together in Tennessee, I'm sure was a bit of a. They didn't know me, thing. so I'm I'm a nobody. Yeah. Well, so. you know, they will though. They will. Oh, they will. Three down. AJ Puck. Pff, boo. Uh, four innings for him uh, against the Angels. Bye. Uh, bye. It's 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 probably done. Uh, Mitch Keller, five runs, four earned. Uh, did strike out five guys, but again against the Nats, you got to handle your business against the Nats. And of course, George Kirby was just pounded into oblivion with ten hits and three <sighs> and two thirds. So. Sigh. All right. Uh, let's talk about injuries. Uh, Heinrich and Hilario was removed from Wednesday's game. Uh, obviously, um, like, I'm sorry, that's an older one. How did that get back in there with the no, I think he did, but I think he did. He uh, hit a double yesterday. I think oh, that's right. right. No, that was Heinrich and yeah, yeah. was removed with the arm injury. That's right. That was yesterday night. The days are starting to already. Yeah. It's only like the first week and they're starting to blend together. So Candelario uh, is probably going to miss at least the next game you would think we'll uh, keep an not. eye on this one uh justin verlander made his first minor league rehab start or will on sunday and then brandon lau was removed with the left side tightness you know what that means the left side tightness is never ever good uh and yes trent i think you're right the puck experiment is over but what does that mean it means more max meyer and i'm here for that welsh i am here for more max meyer he is still rostered in less than half of leagues go pick him up uh, ladies and gentlemen, you know what it's time for now, and hopefully it'll be a better one because yesterday was bad. So we got to get back on the horse. We've been red hot. One little valley. Time to get back to the peak with the Thursday best bets of the day with Joey P and the Welsh. That's right. Okay. So it's a short slate today. Some cool. early games are already underway. Uh, we're going to keep this real simple today. Under seven and a half today, uh, for the Cleveland Seattle game, you got this minus minus one fifteen. You got uh, two solid starters on the hill here. So I would uh, I would take advantage of that. Go with the under in this game. Tanner Bybee also in this game. Six and a half strikeouts, minus 125. I'm going to go the under here. So I'm going to be like Andrew Erickson today, be the undertaker. And then Kansas City, minus one and a half. You're getting a plus 132 against the Chicago White Sox. I like the pitching matchup more on the KC side today. So I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. So give me the under in Cleveland, Seattle. Give me Tanner Bybee under. Uh, on the uh, six and a half Ks, give me Kansas City on that run line minus one and a half plus 132. And if you put the KC bet and my Cleveland Seattle under together, you get three to one odds. So that's your parlay of the day. Welsh, what do you have for the good people? All right. Yeah, you you said it. It is not the best yeah, day. Right. Like it is slim pickings on what you can go with. But my favorite play of the day, we're back at the strikeout market. And if you guys don't follow us on the social medias, make sure you do. You can find Fantasy Pros on Instagram, uh, Fantasy Pros MLB, obviously on the, on the uh, Twitter. And you'll see we do these social videos. And my pick of the day, going in the strikeout market, it might be gross. This is kind of like my Ronaldo Lopez one the other day. Ryan Weathers, strikeouts, four and a half over minus 115 so bet 365 you can get this at uh minus 115 i'm picking on the cardinals and go cards cardinals batting a uh 0.86 so under 100 against lefty small sample size but i have to give you the numbers with around a 25 percent k percentage they are the third worst in strikeouts per game on average right now the cardinals they've been striking out like crazy weathers his velo is up around a mile and a half on the fastball. And he went five strikeouts in the last four innings in his last outing. He also has got a 30% whiff rate. I think this is a good opportunity as that sweeper has been rocking a little bit up on the velo. I think this is a pretty good uh, opportunity and chance for him to get those five strikeouts. And it's a low number. There's not a lot of low numbers today. So Ryan Weathers, that's my favorite play of the day. I'm also going with the Pittsburgh Pirates money line, minus 130. Martin Perez, not great, but it's a lefty going up against, you know, the Washington Nationals where a lot of their good players are lefties. Hopefully the ground ball pitcher, Martin Perez, is going to kind of sustain that. I think some better offensive weapons on Pittsburgh side. I'm going to go with their money line and the best pitching matchup. You kind of mentioned it. You've got the Tanner Bybee, Pablo Lopez. I'm going mm -hmm. with the Nerfy, the no run first inning. That's around minus 130. So no runs, Minnesota and Cleveland in the first inning. Those are my three bets.
I apologize. I said Seattle and Cleveland. I meant to say Minnesota and Cleveland. So uh, that's oh, on me. Either. That's my bad. Uh, again, just I was still living in the past of how yesterday was miserable. So apologies. Well, Seattle hurt you yesterday. Seattle, Seattle they, they hurt, hurt me. You bad. And I just keep thinking about Seattle and all that pain. So it's the, let me recap again, the Cleveland, Minnesota game by the end. Lopez again, the good pitchers, which is why I like the under in this one. Uh, so yes. So let's recap that again. Seven and a half under in Cleveland, uh, Minnesota today. So apologies uh, on my end there. We're, we are human. We are celebrities. But again, we're just well, like man. everybody else. We make mistakes once we're in a while. So oh there you go. God. Make sure you go ahead and make your bets over at Bet365. Bet five bucks, get 150 in bonus bets. Use that promo code leading off when you do. So you can also get a first bet safety and have $1,000 in bonus bets. So go out there, use the promo code. And do your betting at Bet365 with the promo code leading off. All right, Welsh, it's time to continue the hot streak of homers. That's yeah. what I want to do. So I'm going to go to Pete Alonzo. You don't see a lot of Pete Alonzo because the Mets never play because, well, the tri-state area has been underwater for the last few days. So that's where I'm going for my home run call. Boar Bear, Pete. And uh, BT Fouts wants to know also, uh, Joe, are you sure they didn't think you were the guy from Disturbed? Uh, yes, I get that a lot. Uh, David Draymond and I, and I love him. He's awesome. So if that's the guy I get uh, mistaken for, I'm cool with that. That works for me. Uh, they might have thought I was, but actually the guy was a musician. So he still knew who I was. So there you go. Welsh, yeah. where are you going for your home run call today? I mean, who cares? Well, by the way, uh, for you, so people know, this is for game two. You don't get game one. You don't get both games. He gets game, he gets game yeah, two. Yeah, I know. I learned that the hard way, which is funny because that happened once with Pete Alonzo to me and Mike Mayer didn't give me the home run. Because he's like, no, you don't get it for the first game because it's a makeup game. I said, yeah. what do you mean? He's out there. Why don't I get eight shots? It's home run calls for Thursday or the day. And he was like, he did his Matumbo finger. Too. I know. And I, <laughs> yeah. uh, the rules. So you get game two. I mean, who cares what I have to say? This is all, it's just Joe's world. Five homers in like two days. So it doesn't matter. I'm wrong about everything. I got uh, yesterday like all my bets you're were, not like, wrong you just refuse to hold hands with me and i don't yeah. know why what did i ever do to you why can't you be on the same guy with me why can't we just like you know put the keys and, and turn them together at the same time why can't we do that i should have i and i should have done that I, I would be in a much better spot i'd probably be near the leader at the lead but i uh yesterday my a lot of my bets got rained out you're talking about having the bad day yeah. like the the braves i had I multiple wish seattle bets got rained out That's i know me too <laughs> So I got a little cheeky yesterday and I, I did something stupid that did not pay off, by the way. So I went with, I felt, I felt O'Neill Cruz, he was leading off and I'm like, you know what? Trevor Williams, he gave up like 30 homers last year. I bet his homer and then I bet him like, I bet like five bucks on it to hit two homers. It was like 33 to one or whatever. But, and those didn't hit and he looked awful yesterday. It got me thinking. I bet him to hit homer yesterday. We're going to get the pivot today. He's going to hit them today. So I'm going to my guy. O'Neill Cruz for a home run today. He's going to do me right today after losing me money yesterday. All right. So back on the horse again, if you want to make your calls, go do it over at fantasypros.com slash chat in our discord. It's free. It's fun. It's amazing. And of course there's the leaderboard. Pazzy has seven. Oh. Talk about red hot boss in O's or Bose and O's. I don't know. Is up <laughs> Bose and O what? Squarkapa. Boats and Five, I have five, and Larry, our good friend Larry C, up at five already. Way to go, Larry! Look at us. There you go. And, Larry, uh, I don't see Mayor or Penguin on this list. By the way, I don't. Yeah, know. Yeah, you know, I told Mayor. I was talking with Mayor the other day, and I'm like, if you want to give us your homers, we'll announce them on there. And you know, he's he's like, oh, I had like one, and I don't know, and and we're not, we're just not getting the involvement from Mayor and Wonky. Now, speaking know. of the audio only feed to the cycle with Worm and uh, Mayor is going to be out today, I believe, as well. So they have an audio only pod. So again, if you watch on YouTube, subscribe to the podcast version too. So you get those bonus things like the cycle, which is a you know weekly hour long deep dive into what's going on in fantasy. We only do a half hour every day. So this is more of a macro level, I guess, kind of look at things. Did I use that properly? I hope so. That's all right. Uh, okay, good. Uh, and then of course, uh, we put yesterday's little fun session with all the folks there over on Discord in cleaning up on there also. Uh, so <laughs> wonky said she didn't have time to, to listen to anything because she's too busy telling people they can't, uh, get double headers out there. And, you know, I mean, I'm just saying like, I don't think that should matter. Like 
if a game goes extra innings and a guy gets eight at bats, what's the difference if he's playing a doubleheader that day? Well, I think you would really have loved uh, if I saw this correctly. I think Go Cards was going into his Go Cards mode. I think saying that uh, if you have three homers in a day, it should only count as one and not three. I love I love to hear your take on that one, <laughs> bro. Bro, it's home run calls. You know, I'm calling a guy to hit a home run. If they hit three, they hit three. This is how we play the game. This is how it works. You don't like the rules? Do more research. I don't know what to tell you guys. All I know is that I am the home run champion so far oh. in the first week. I'm just saying. Like, I'm right there. I, this, this, I feel like I do this every year. I get off to a good start, and then I go stone cold in, like, May for a long time. Well, break like, the glass, time. please, because I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of breaking the glass... Just a couple days till WrestleMania. I'm so excited. It's going to be amazing. If you're going to be there, let me know. Go hit me up on social media. I'll say Joe has a betting video too. If you want to get, to, I don't know where the hell you can bet wrestling. You can <laughs> a lot more places than you realize, which is kind of funny, but true. Uh, you know, you can bet wrestling in a lot of other places, you know, but, you know, but seriously, you could get, uh, they've got it over there in a lot of places right now. And just like you can bet the Oscars, you know, we know the outcome of that. Last year, a lot of people bet Cody Rhodes to win. Guess what? Roman Reigns won. <laughs> if you bet Roman Reigns, you want a lot more money going five to one. I think the odds were last year on him. Follow the socials. That's right. You'll Follow see Joe's video. Joe, Joe's Joe got a video out there of uh, some of the best bets for WrestleMania. So yeah, our best go. bets are always on betting pros. Download the betting pros app too, because that's the way to go. And of course, if you haven't already, what do we always tell you to do on the way out of the show? Be smart. Sync your league. Use my playbook MLB version. Download that bad boy or go to fantasypros.com slash MLB My Playbook, it's awesome. It will help you continue to navigate the rough waters of the MLB season. Yesterday was rough. Today's a short slate. It's going to be a fun Friday tomorrow. Make sure you join us right here again, 1230 Eastern. Subscribe to Fantasy Bros. MLB. Win that trophy. And, of course, join us live for leading off. That'll do it for us. But the story of the game goes on for the Welsh. I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids. Peace.